Yuji and Toto, one of Jujutsu Kaisen's most lethal duos, has been putting on a show in their battle against Mahito, and in this video, I'll be putting their teamwork to the ultimate test. Just as I did with Yuji and Megumi before, I will be placing these two sorcerers against the might of every special grade curse spirit we've seen in the series, in order to determine just how strong they really are. Starting off with the warm-up, the first curse spirit that Yuji and Toto will be going up against is Tamamo no Mei. This is one of the 16 registered special grade curse spirits that exists in Japan, and it's a curse that we only see very briefly being used to combine into Ghetto's maximum curse technique. Because of its lack of general showings, it's really hard to determine just how useful in combat it really is. Ghetto deciding not to use it in his fight with Yuta and Rika certainly implies that it's not that strong, and considering the fact that Toto has taken on special grade curses individually, when pairing him up with the likes of Yuji, it's no stretch to say that Tamamo no Mei would be beaten without a problem. Kicking the intensity up just a bit, Yuji and Toto move on to face the finger finger bearer special grades, curse spirits that certainly have feats, but nothing impressive enough to defeat these two together. Even when looking at the stronger of the two finger bearers, we see that it was able to be defeated by an injured Megami that had just awakened a domain expansion, and on top of that, it could be one shot immediately by Divine Dog's Claws. This Shikigami's best attack potency showing is damaging Hanami, which is a feat that both Yuji and Toto are able to perform with their base level of strength, meaning it's highly likely that these two bombarding the finger bearers with their attacks would be enough to exercise it in seconds. If Yuji and Toto fought either of these finger bearers individually, I don't think it would even be necessary for Toto to unleash his curse technique. But if for some reason both finger bearers were fighting Yuji and Toto as a sort of 2v2 matchup, maybe Boogie Woogie would need to get released, but in all honesty, the outcome is very similar regardless. These two sorcerers absolutely cook these two special grades, and it'll be a nice get back for that time that Yuji lost his hand to one of them. Just above the finger bearers, I have the smallpox deity, which is a somewhat interesting curse spirit to put these two up against, if only because of its domain expansion. Statistically speaking, the smallpox deity is nothing of note, as it essentially gets blitzed by Mei Mei in two shot by the combination of her massive axe and bird strike. Getting bodied by bird strike isn't necessarily an anti-feat, considering all of the hype that this technique gets both in the anime and manga, but when remembering the fact that even before this, Mei Mei was able to physically overwhelm the curse spirit, it becomes quite obvious that Yuji and Toto can handle this curse when things get up close. The only hang up is the domain of the smallpox deity. Upon activation, the sorcerer with the highest amount of cursed energy is trapped inside of a coffin and then forcefully buried underground by a massive boulder. If after three seconds the target hasn't escaped the coffin, they'll be infected with the disease and killed without fail. As you may know, neither Toto nor Yuji have a domain expansion. Toto has a simple domain which he picked up from training with Yuki, but Yuji has absolutely no counter to this form of attack. Now in this particular instance, having no official counter to domain expansion doesn't mean that much because of the domain's conditions and targeting options. If Toto opens a simple domain, the technique of the smallpox domain is null and void, leaving Yuji free to demolish it up close, and even if neither of them were to deploy some anti-domain technique, the other can simply kill the cursed spirit, while the other continuously breaks out of the coffin and boulder loop. It's a bit of a brutish method, but if Mei Mei can survive doing this 3-4 to four times without taking significant damage, I see no reason for Yuji or Toto to not be able to survive this onslaught without damage for quite a few rounds. In the end, the smallpox deity's domain doesn't prove to be too much of an issue, but you'll see how problematic domains get for this duo as we start getting to stronger and stronger cursed spirits. Before getting to that level, first let's address Esso and Kechizu, creatures that aren't technically cursed spirits in the conventional sense, but close enough to curses that I would count them for the sake of this list. Now, much like the smallpox deity and finger bears, in terms of physical ability, these two don't even begin to compare with Yuji and Toto Shibuya scaling. At best, you could say that a Yuji somewhat inhibited by pain scales relative to Esso and above Kechizu, while they fully refreshed Yuji and Toto just scale above them outright. Now, unlike in the actual canon, neither Yuji nor Toto can rely on resonance to get them out of a pinch if they get hit by the brother's blood. However, because Nobara isn't here in the first place, it's quite likely that the dynamic duo of Yuji and Toto don't even get hit by the blood attack in the first place. Yuji somewhat burdened himself by carrying Nobara and attempting to save her in this fight, but he wouldn't have to do that with Toto, and in fact, even if they do find themselves in a position where blood is sprayed at them, with a simple clap of his hands, Toto can get them out of dodge. From there, it's a pretty straightforward beatdown of 
of their opponents that doesn't require too much explanation. Now, next up, we have Yuji and Toto versus Hanami. And this is actually a very weird matchup to talk about because you would think that this fight plays out exactly how it did in the series before. And it isn't crazy to think that, but my only hang up is the usage of Black Flash in this fight and the domain expansion being interrupted by Gojo. These two unknowns turn this mid to high difficulty fight in Yuji and Toto's favor into a battle that I'm not even sure they could win. To give Yuji and Toto some credit, I will say this. By the point in time where they are working together in Shibuya, they should outscale Hanami as a duo even more than they did before. Since Goodwill, Yuji has only gotten stronger and improved his cursed energy refinement, and Toto is able to keep up and perform as well as Yuji is in this arc, so it's safe to say that they outscale Hanami by a pretty notable margin. They certainly aren't blitzing Hanami by any means, as they just don't have the feats to support that level of scaling, but their own physical capabilities, combined with the fact that Boogie Woogie is always on the table, should give them a solid advantage against the tree curse. Their base physical attacks should also scale high enough to do damage to Hanami, and we know this because they themselves mention how strong the two sorcerers are in battle. The problem comes in when we talk about Hanami's resilience. See, Hanami was durable enough to survive five black flashes and a full power playful cloud swing from Toto and still had enough cursed energy to take on the burden of opening a domain. What this says to me is that Yuji and Toto are likely to gas out of cursed energy and physical stamina well before Hanami. If they don't land those same amount of critical strikes, you can basically guarantee that Hanami's massive walls of cursed energy and elite defenses would be enough to outlast the two sorcerers. For any who are skeptical of this notion, it's made clear rather consistently that Hanami and the disaster curse spirits in general have reserves of cursed energy that can't be compared to that of conventional sorcerers. Not only does Toto remark at Maito's reserves during their fight in Shibuya, with Maito likely not eclipsing Hanami or the rest of his disaster cursed brethren, but Hanami themselves actually puts it in plain terms. While Toto certainly has a presence to him, in terms of raw cursed energy, he isn't all that impressive. Hanami's massive well of cursed energy, ridiculous durability, and ease of healing would allow them to outlast Yuji and Toto if it came down to that, simply due to them not having the cursed energy, physical stamina, or healing capacity that Hanami himself has. The main issue is that Black Flashes, even in Yuji's case, can't be relied on as a consistent get out of jail free card. While they were able to consistently word on Hanami in the canonical fight due to these Black Flashes, in a power scaling matchup such as this, I'm not sure I'd like to say that Yuji can, without a shadow of a doubt, pull them off consistently. In the event that he is unable to produce those five black flashes and damage Hanami to the extent that he did in the series, I see it as a very real possibility that Yuji and Toto don't have enough in the tank to defeat the cursed spirit. As we've seen before, Hanami can start adapting to Boogie Woogie as well if given enough time, and is strong enough to hurt Yuji and Toto when their strikes land. Even with how well they performed against Hanami initially, based on this chapter extra illustration, we know that Yuji and Toto both sustained some pretty serious damage. Prolonging this battle in any capacity only makes Yuji and Toto more likely to get seriously injured to the point of being a liability to their partner or outright incapacitated within the context of this battle. Pair that with a domain expansion that'll amp Hanami's stats and curse technique and you got yourself a pretty major problem. You could certainly argue that the sure hit effect of Hanami's domain would be completely negated because of Toto's simple domain, but any usage of this ability and curse technique simultaneously would be quite limited as it's ambiguous as to whether or not sorcerers on Toto's level can even use anti-domain techniques like simple domain with their own curse technique. This could potentially result in Toto being unable to protect himself and Yuji from Hanami's sure hit while also using Boogie Woogie to efficiently team up against the tree curse. And just like Dagon, Hanami should still be able to use amplified versions of their techniques within the domain even without the can't miss effect being imbued into the barrier. In the event that Yuji and Toto are essentially able to recreate those same black flashes in this fight, victory becomes a significantly more viable possibility. However, that uninterrupted domain expansion still proves to be quite problematic. As weird as this may sound, I actually think that Hanami takes this fight against the two with extreme high difficulty. Following very closely on the heels of Hanami, we have Dagon, another character that physically should be below the likes of Yuji and Toto, but due to their massive walls of cursed energy and overall resilience, might be a pretty tough cursed spirit to put in the dirt. For starters, we know that Dagon is likely a bit weaker than Hanami outright, whereas Hanami and Jogo are implied to be on a bit more even footing by Gege, Nanami and Naobito perceive the difference between Jogo and Dagon to be quite massive. Despite this fact, Dagon is able to survive quite a lot of punishment just like his disaster cursed brethren, as after taking one hit from Nanami, the 7-3 Sorcerer concludes that Dagon basically has limitless HP. This is relevant because Nanami at this point in the series is said to be comparable in striking ability to Yuji. How highly you value this statement
treatment will vary person to person, but it's quite consistently shown that Dagon is able to survive the attacks of two grade 1 sorcerers and a physically gifted fighter in Maki without fearing immediate death. Speed wise, Dagon isn't super impressive, only really having decent scaling compared to Maki and Nanami, two characters who have been long since surpassed by Yuji and Toto, at least in the speed department. In Nanami's case, we just know that Yuji was relative to him before getting numerous power ups and increases in efficiency, and it's been stated on multiple occasions that Yuji is superior to Maki in physical stats and overall athleticism. This puts the two sorcerers in a similar position as the fight with Hanami. They're faster, they have good hacks to fight Dagon, and they can hurt him, but the problem is actually getting rid of him for good. That combined with Dagon's tendency to open his domain rather quickly, once again puts Toto and Yuji on the defensive. With no boogie woogie on the table, an amp Dagon with multiple massively strong Shikigami, and an amount of cursed energy that Yuji and Toto can't really compare to, it might be another case of a war of attrition for these two sorcerers. It's not impossible for them to win, just as it isn't with Hanami, but you need to argue that Yuji or Toto really lock in, land a black flash, and turn up throughout the entirety of the fight. It isn't absurd to say that the battle plays out like that, but it's also not a sure enough factor to intentionally count on. Depending on Yuji and Toto's luck, I could honestly see this battle going either way. Let's give these two a little bit of reprieve before jumping back into the rest of the Disaster Curse Spirit family, as Choso throws his hat in the ring in an attempt to avenge his fallen brothers. This fight is quite interesting to me, because Choso is honestly one of the few curse like creatures on this list that I think could press Yuji and Toto without a domain on standby. The dynamic duo wouldn't have to worry about getting bombarded by sure hit techniques, but this would still be quite the interesting battle considering just how problematic Choso's abilities are. Piercing Blood especially would prove to be an issue even for Toto and Boogie Woogie because of the sheer speed of the attack. We've seen how quickly it can overwhelm Yuji's reactionary speed and durability, and this issue would be doubled in Toto's case. Yuji has a distinct advantage against Choso due to his resistance to all poisons and toxins, but this is a resistance that Toto simply doesn't have. One wrong glancing blow from one of Choso's attacks and the timer on Toto's life starts. It may not immediately take him out of the game, but it would certainly make him progressively weaker and less effective, and we already know how Yuji and Choso 1v1-ing turned out. I wouldn't count Toto out of this fight entirely though, because because Choso would have his hands full fighting two combatants as efficient as these two, getting teleported all around the battlefield would prove quite the troublesome thing to adapt to, and we already know that Yuji's attacks can do quite significant damage to Choso when he isn't protecting himself with blood armor. One factor in this fight that could significantly impact the outcome is the availability of water. In Yuji and Choso's actual battle, Itadori lucked out by getting assistance from Mekamaru and being in an area where a sprinkler system is available to douse Choso and limit his external manipulation of blood. In the event that Yuji and Toto are in a similar position, I have no doubt in my mind that Toto would come to the conclusion that water would nullify or significantly weaken Choso's manipulation of blood and lower their opponent's range quite drastically. Eliminating piercing blood from Choso's list of moves quickly and effectively all but guarantees Yuji and Toto's victory. I could see these two sustaining some pretty critical damage that wouldn't allow them to continue fighting for a while, but if all Choso could do is reinforce his body with cursed energy and manipulate his own blood internally, he's losing this fight with pretty extreme difficulty. If the strategy isn't possible due to location, things get a bit more dicey. I still fundamentally believe that Yuji and Toto can pull off wins, they are just significantly more difficult to come by and probably come in exchange for one of these sorcerers lives. Toto should just be barely fast enough to react to piercing blood inconsistently, meaning that Boogie Woogie could certainly be used with a decent level of success, but it shouldn't be underestimated just how careful Toto has to be throughout his entire fight. Even ignoring the ridiculous puncturing power that piercing blood has, Toto has a very small amount of time left to be effective before Choso's poison takes complete effect and incapacitates him. Supernova, Piercing Blood, Blood Meteorite, the Wolverine Claws, and many of Choso's other unnamed blood-based techniques would all have to be avoided by Toto perfectly while also prioritizing Itadori's safety as well. It's possible and potentially even probable that they secure the victory, but it for damn sure isn't easy. I'd argue that Choso even wins 40 to 45% of the time that they fight if Yuji and Toto aren't able to use the water strategy against the death painting special grade. A win's a win, but this is definitely the hardest that they can consistently pull off so far. Just like Hanami, Maito is another example of the story saying that Yuji and Toto should win, but the context of that win saying something else entirely. While Yuji and Toto are by no means incomparable to Maito in this battle, there are a few key details that would be changed that could result in an extremely different outcome. For starters, Maito's main body in this fight would be significantly more sound from the jump. This is true for Yuji as well, due to Nobara and Nanami's death not shaking him up, but in Maito's case, I find people acknowledge his own nerfs less frequently. Not only was he 
shown to be relative to a less battle damage Yuji while having his clone fighting an entirely different opponent, but he was also severely weakened by the tandem of attacks of Yuji and Obara due to that clone being hit by resonance. In chapter 128, Maito actually assesses the situation and mentions that his clone being destroyed by Yuji, Nobara's soul damaging resonance, and Yuji's barrage of attacks taking advantage of all of that messed him up quite significantly, all of these events being non-factors in this bout. This means that the Maito that nearly beat Yuji in total to begin with would be even more competent than he already was. And if we take his percentage gauges literally, he'd increase his overall abilities by 60%. To make matters worse, Mahito had already spammed his technique at least a thousand times to transfigure all of those humans in Shibuya, so even before Mahito started fighting Nobara and Yuji, he should have expended a decent amount of his own cursed energy. Now, don't get it twisted, Mahito still struggles pretty heavily against Yuji and Toto, as this duo would give him trouble no matter the circumstances, but it's important to put into context just how much Mahito had already been through by the time Toto arrived. To make matters worse for these two, Mahito once again is an example of a character who could have only been defeated via the sparks of Black Awakening and Yuji in very specific and very crucial moments. If Yuji doesn't land that key Black Flash immediately following Mahito's last ditch effort domain expansion, it stated verbatim that Mahito's true form would have torn Yuji to shreds. In all fairness though, I do think that it's more likely that Yuji pulls off a Black Flash against his arch nemesis just due to the focus state that he's likely to enter. Even if you do say that though, I think Mahito's significant increase in overall abilities due to him being less fatigued and injured leads to Yuji and Toto's defeat. We see how much they struggled against him when he had his soul power cut in half, so I can only imagine the increase in reserves being quite the issue for him. If you think that Yuji lands that crucial black flash 10 out of 10 times, then Yuji and Toto probably win more encounters than not. However, I think it's not feasible to assume that the cards fall in their favor that consistently. The duo would still be able to pull out wins here or there, but if I had to gauge with a hard value, I'd say that Maruto wins 60 to 70% of the time. Unfortunately, the next character on the list is giving them a much harder time, and that's Jogo. Now, Jogo is a significantly more difficult opponent for these two, not because he's necessarily stronger than Mahito, but because all of his abilities work on Yuji, where that's not the case for Mahito. Choso and Mahito are the prime examples of this point. Neither of their abilities work to their fullest extent against him, and as a result, they have to try that much harder in order to put him down. But for Jogo, this simply isn't the case. Based on character and author statements, we know that Jogo is significantly above the likes of someone like Dagon, who we already said that Yuji and Toto would have problems against, but he's also above Hanami due to his fire being a bad matchup for him. Now, Yuji and Toto can definitely hurt Jogo because his durability is so much lower than that of Hanami's, but that's about where their advantages start and stop. In terms of speed, we know he's fast enough to perception blitz Maki, a character who Hanami considered quite fast, and someone that Maki could keep track of visually, placing Jogo above the likes of Hanami speed-wise by a significant margin. He doesn't necessarily speed blitz Yuji and Toto, but he honestly doesn't have to. Because of the massive range that Jogo has with his attacks, Toto's Boogie Woogie won't even be the most useful skill in this fight. If Jogo blows up an entire block with one massive attack, even if the two sorcerers could react, they wouldn't be able to cover enough ground to consistently avoid his attacks. At the end of chapter 128, Toto actually mentions that attacking from all sides is a pretty hard counter to a swapping ability. On top of this, Ember Insects could pester them from afar, while he spawns volcanoes and massive waves of lava to melt right through them. And to top it all off, he has a domain expansion, which could certainly be countered by Toto in a simple domain, but would once again only amp Jogo's abilities beyond their normal limits and limit the two's maneuverability due to Boogie Woogie not being in play. I won't say that Jogo low dips them, but he certainly handles them with a relative amount of comfortability due to his overall curse energy levels and ridiculous firepower. The next few cursed spirits haven't shown up in the anime quite yet, so if you want to avoid manga spoilers, go ahead and jump to this timestamp. If not, let's run through these manga cursed spirits, starting with Kururushi. Now, this cursed spirit isn't weak by any means, but 9 times out of 10, it just isn't able to get the job done. Its best feat is catching Yuta off guard with its cursed tool, but aside from that, it physically gets dominated by a Kotsu in a more significant capacity than Yuji does, and adding Toto to the mix would just make it an even more one-sided ordeal. The massive cock Roaches and Festering Life Sword may cause some difficulty on Yuji and Toto's end, but the sword can easily be countered by Toto clapping and taking it out of Kurushi's hands, and the massive cockroaches don't really have any feats to support them doing that much damage to either Yuji or Toto, and in the worst case scenario, one swap from Toto and now they don't even have to deal with them in the first place. The offspring of Kurushi also wouldn't be that much of an issue, because they would literally just be able to repeat the process they used to beat it before. I don't know if this can be said for the Ganesha Curse Spirit though, and this isn't meant to be a hint at Yuji and Toto losing, 
I actually just don't know how strong the Ganesha Curse Spirit is and what exactly its curse technique means when going up against these two sorcerers specifically. The only two things we've really seen it do is one shot some random soldiers and get one shot by Garuda. Neither of these two things really telling us all that much. Getting one tapped by Yuki's abilities isn't that much of an anti feat considering her overwhelming shrink and curse technique, but it also doesn't give much for us to go on power wise. I've definitely flip flopped in the past on giving a win to the curse spirit despite its obvious lack of feats, but today it kind of just feels absurd to give the W to a curse that can entangle concepts but hasn't shown its usefulness in battle. Yuji and Toto take this even if only because they actually have scaling to go off of. Speaking of Feetless Curse Spirits, in the manga we got recently introduced to a special grade Rebel Spirit that gets one shot by a truck, so uh, honestly doesn't give us much to go on. I'ma just say, Yuji and Toto body this thing. Unfortunately, Curse Naoya isn't something that Yuji and Toto can say the same thing for. Naoya in his Curse Spirit form is blatantly faster than he was in his fight against Maki. That Naoya is faster than the one that Perception blitzes Yuji while holding back, and this Yuji is obviously comparable to any form of him that we see in the Shibuya Incident arc. In terms of raw speed, Naoya should cook both of these two without difficulty. In fact, the gap should be large enough in certain instances to render even Boogie Woogie ineffective. If Toto can't perceive and register Naoya's movements consistently, then he has no hope of utilizing his technique in any meaningful capacity. I've seen some arguments suggesting that Naoya is only really a problem after building up speed due to his little scuffle with Kamo. However, he's also shown the capacity to react to Maki during the in-between stages of her development, and even this incomplete awakened Maki is a very different tier of strength than Yuji and Toto. His attack potency is also enough to put both sorcerers down with one or maybe two hits if you're generous, so long as Naoya backs up and builds up speed. He was strong enough to absolutely run Maki through and significantly damage her internally, and once again, Maki's durability at this point is well above Yuji and Toto's and Shibuya, so you can only imagine how much damage each character will take if Naoya rams into them at max speed. And to top off the L sandwich, Naoya has a domain with a pretty tricky can't miss attack. If the ability lands really quickly like Maito's domain, then Toto even moving to take the stance to cast a simple domain would do significant damage to his body. Realistically though, I do think Toto will be able to activate his technique and save off the negative effects of projection sorcery within the barrier, but if Naoya is already a headache to deal with in base, I don't think they have it in them to defeat him with all the extra stats you get within your own domain expansion. Yuji and Toto as they are in Shibuya, simply have to hold the L to curse spirit Naoya. The losses just keep coming as Rika Orimoto is next on the list. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, Yuji and Toto just don't have any way to kill Rika. She has one of the shallowest bags and smallest brains when it comes to curse spirits that we're talking about today, but she makes up for this with overwhelming power and cursed energy that seems never ending. If you thought the disaster curse spirits would be able to win a war of attrition, Rika is going to really show them how it's done. Even when in an incomplete state that pales in comparison to her previous full power, Rika was strong enough to completely immobilize Yuji, meaning that the full manifestation of Rika's powers are likely enough to send Yuji and Toto to an early grave with just a few strikes. Speed also shouldn't be an issue for Rika either, considering that she scales relative to characters like Yuta. Yuta is able to obviously perform well against Yuji even in physical combat, so even with Boogie Woogie being in play, one or two glancing blows is taking these fighters out, and blocking attacks from this thing just isn't an option. Yuji and Toto, based on their Shibuya scaling, actually have no hope of defeating Rika, and she just overwhelms them through sheer physicality. And to complete this gauntlet run, we got a curse that isn't really a curse, Ryomen Sukuna. He's honestly just here because of his title as the King of Curses, and it's always fun to have him as the final boss on a list like this. Now, I'm sure everyone knows that Sukuna trounces these two with anything more than like three fingers, but the question is, could Yuji and Toto get it done against one or two fingers of Ryomen Sukuna? And the answer to that question is no didn't have to think about it all that much. Not only are Sukuna's attacks invisible, meaning that swapping with them would become infinitely more difficult, but even if you assume that Yuji and Toto for some reason just absolutely body slam Sukuna physically, the moment the domain gets pulled out, the fight is over. Toto can cast his simple domain all he wants, but that thing is getting torn to shreds in seconds, and after that, they're either turning into a paste or very evenly shaped cubes. And that is Yuji and Toto versus every special grade curse in the series. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, check out this video where I put Yuji and Megami through this very gauntlet, and you could also check out this playlist full of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 videos for you to watch at your own leisure. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.